Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and today I'm in my 1.2 test world to do a new mod spotlight on a mod that a couple people have recommended to me, especially after doing my Railcraft spotlight. This is a mod I never used before and was pretty uh, interested in checking out, and then once I read the uh, documentation on it, I was kind of like, whoa, this is really cool. So let's check out today, Steve's Carts. Uh, Steve's Carts adds 22 minecarts to the game with all kinds of awesome stuff. Um, in fact, a couple of the minecarts that are added are not viewable in t uh, NEI. So uh, I'm going to have to show you them building manually, but that's okay. It's not too bad. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff in here, and it's actually a really neat mod. There's uh, a couple minecarts in particular that are extremely impressive. So stay tuned to check those out. But I'm going to start off with some of the more basic ones and then work my way up. And as you can see, I've set up some project tables here for all the crazy carts that you can make. Um, mining gadget. Check it out. I'll be back to show you guys Steve's carts. Okay guys, the first cart that Steve Carts add for you here is called the Minecart with Engine. Uh, this is pretty much similar to the Minecart with a furnace in it, and it's crafted like so. You're going to need to get yourself what's called an engine, and uh, that's just simply eight pieces of iron around a furnace. And you'll find that a lot of the minecarts in Steve's carts require items that are um, newly crafted and their purpose is a uh, upgrade to an existing cart. So here's an example of the minecart with engine. Uh, you can see that right now it's just got a fuel level here and a few blocks to go ahead and place the fuel in. Uh, the following items can be used as fuel. Uh, coal, blaze rod, lava bucket, saplings, sticks, and pretty much anything made out of wood. Um, now, you're going to have different levels of fuel added based on the different items you use. For example, coal gives this engine 3,600 uh, levels of fuel. So let's place a single piece of coal in there, and you'll see that it starts moving. It starts zipping around the cart here, and uh, it'll keep going until that fuel level runs out. So even though there was only one piece of coal in there, this thing's going to keep trucking along until it hits something that makes it stop, uh, be it a detector rail, uh, which is something I'll get into in a minute here, or until it runs out of fuel. And of course I can add more fuel to it and let it keep going over and over and over again. Um, Coal has 3,600, blaze rods are 5,400, a lava bucket is 45,000, and uh, sapling sticks are uh, 225, so a lot smaller. So uh, pretty much your best bet there, I would say, is coal, but it's up to you how you want to use it. Next up, we've got the storage cart with engine, and that's simply the mine cart with engine plus a chest. And uh, this guy should look pretty familiar and obvious. It's uh, engine plus a little storage cart there for you. So you can go ahead and get some more coal, plug it in, and uh, store some items in it, and it'll travel along with those items. And uh, again, keep zipping along until it runs out of fuel. And there's two upgrades to that, the large storage cart with engine, which is simply a mine cart with engine and two chests, or the storage cart with one more chest. And it basically ups it up uh, a little bit more storage. And then you've also got the huge storage cart, uh, which you can upgrade the existing large with one chest, or a uh, storage cart with two chests. And uh, let's check out the interfaces on these guys real quick. Uh, there's the large and there's the huge. Again, fuel, chest, fuel, lot of space. Awesome. So uh, same basic concept there, but just more storage space. Next up, we've got the building cart. This guy is a minecart with engine plus a track dispenser, the track dispenser built shown here. Um, what you can do with this guy is simply place some rails inside the inventory for the builder and give it some coal. And it's going to start running and it's going to place down rail carts in front of it wherever it needs to. And you can even have it go over obstacles like that and it'll continue along just fine. Pretty cool. Next up, we've got something called the Mining Cart. Now, the Mining Cart is a building cart with a mining gadget upgrade. And the mining gadget upgrade is created with a diamond pickaxe and a diamond shovel. So not a cheap cart by any means, but definitely not the most expensive. Uh, just place that on your rail here, and you can see that it's got pretty much the same interface as a, as a builder cart, but this guy, when it hits an inner uh, wall, it's going to go ahead and mine out around it and clear out some space. And you can see it's just going to spit the items out behind it and drop everything and start clearing out a nice tunnel path for you. And because it's a builder cart, it's going to go ahead and place down a, um, another rail directly in front of it before it moves forward. Awesome. 
But who wants to drop the items you're collecting on the ground? That's why we've got... The mining cart with chest. Recipe shown here, mining cart plus chest. And it's the same exact setup. Place a rail, place some fuel, and you'll see that anything that it mines, it's going to automatically store inside its inventory with the chest. So you can see all the items it's collecting go inside the inventory right there. Pretty sweet. And as much fun as it is to mine with carts, it's even more fun to ride in them. That's why we've got the traveling cart. Uh, it's simply a mine cart with an advanced engine in it, the advanced engine shown here. Uh, this is a smaller engine which leaves room for the player. Simply right click on the interface here and place some coal inside or press the mount button. Um, it's going to start moving around and if you press the mount button here, you can get into it. Hooray! Fun to ride and uh, hit dismount to get out. Awesome. But isn't it a shame that it just starts going as soon as you put fuel in it? Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's why we've got the controllable traveling cart. Simply a traveling cart with a steering gear module added in. Um, this guy, if you place him down and uh, open up the interface, you've got a couple extra buttons here. Start and reverse. Place your fuel in and it's not going anywhere. The fuel level stays even and it doesn't move. You can mount and dismount at your will. And um, once you hit the start button, it's going to start moving along. Whee! And hit the reverse button to go in the other direction. Oh, cool. And stop to stop it and dismount to get out. So a little bit of an upgrade there to use the controllable traveling cart. Now using coal as a fuel source is not the best because we've got other uses for coal, don't we? Tons of stuff we can do. So that's why we've got the hybrid cart, hybrid electric energy. Look at that. Mine cart with engine plus a solar panel on top. Uh, the solar panel crafted like so allows you to place down the cart and open up the interface and you can see there's a power level here um, and this line this meter here shows you the current sunlight coming in so it just happens to be getting dark out and we can see that the solar panel is no longer charging and the light level is starting to dip too low for it to gain power the uh, light level has to be above this green line for power to be charged up but that's okay if we make it daytime again uh, you can see that it's got a full charge and at uh, total night it's pretty low on charge so uh, got to give it plenty of light here now the interface in the middle here allows you to choose what type of uh, fuel is used to power this cart so you can power it with coal as well as solar power and uh, if uh, it's on the black bar like it is now it's only going to use normal fuel so it'll never move under solar power energy but if you put a uh, click bar here you'll see that it's alternating between black and yellow that means it's going to use some solar and some fuel but there's no fuel in it at the moment so let's put some in so you can see that now the power level is dripping uh, down a little bit less it's alternating between the internal fuel and the solar power but you can click the block again here and it'll go yellow over black that means use solar energy if there is any otherwise once you run out of solar power go ahead and use normal fuel and you can reverse that here where it's going to use normal fuel before it uses solar power and finally the full yellow bar uses only solar energy and when it runs out of solar power it will not use any of the internal fuel sweet Next up, we've got the torch placer cart. This guy is a hybrid cart, which you just saw, plus a torch rack. Some iron and some torches make a torch rack. The torch placer, pretty cool mill device, guess what it does? It places torches. Go ahead and uh, you can see it's got solar power, so it'll go ahead and use its internal solar energy. And uh, this red bar here indicates the light level at which it's going to place a torch. Right now, it's got a full light level, so it doesn't feel like it's dark enough to place down a torch, and it won't. So let's get this guy going into a darker area. We've got this little cave that we started digging out here a moment ago. Let's see if we can get it going. So uh, simply open up your interface, give it fuel, or let it run on solar power and give it some torches to place. So we'll let it go. And um, if we watch the interface here, we'll see if the light level gets below. It did not. So give me a minute to make this a little darker cave. All right, let's try this again. I made the cave a little deeper and therefore darker. Go ahead and place some coal and some torches in there and once it gets to the light level that it feels is dark enough to place a torch it placed them its uh, optional choice is to place it two blocks above itself but if there was no room there it would go ahead and try and place it one block above itself then on the even block 
one block below and two blocks below. So it'll try and do that in that order. And it'll continue along placing torches whenever it gets dark enough. Next up we've got the TNT cart, because who doesn't love explosions? I do. Go ahead and uh, just give it some fuel, and when the TNT cart drives over a normal detector cart, it's going to go ahead and fuse, um, charge up, and cause the uh, explosion. It'll arm the fuse. So let's see, there we go. Uh-oh. Kaboom! Nice. Now, if you were thinking a little bit ago when I showed you the mining cart which can automatically mine through blocks, you might have said, Direwolf, what happens if it runs into lava while it's mining? Ooh, that might be a problem, what do you think? Let's check out what happens to the mining cart when it hits lava. Go ahead and put some fuel and some rails in there for it to take care of it. Oh no! My mining cart! One of the other problems you might experience with the a uh, with the simple mining cart is that if it runs into a pit, it's going to get stuck. Oh no! I fell into a hole and could not place down a new rail cart. Trouble. So keep that in mind for what you're about to see. Um, one of the new carts added here is called the Simple AI Miner. And the Simple AI Miner is crafted with a regular mining cart with chest, plus a PCB module, a simple PCB, which um, I have a crafting recipe for somewhere along here. There you go. It's uh, gold, iron, and redstone get you a simple PCB. And that's just a simple little device to help with um, the Simple AI Miner. Now the simple AI miner is a little bit more intelligent than your regular miner. Let's check it out, shall we? So let's check out the simple AI miner, which solves some of the problems with the basic miner cart. All right, open up the interface and you'll see that it's got a fuel line and it's got a builder line. We've all also got a depth meter here. This is the Y position level that the cart will try to reach before it starts mining. And you can decrease the number by clicking the down arrow. Okay, you can also shift click the down arrow to get deeper and you can see you get to see what level of mining you're at. So um, right here is a position where you have a chance of getting some gold. And if you go deeper, you've got a chance for lapis and for diamond and possibly lava. So you want to be careful about where you tell your miner to dig. Now the green bar that you're seeing here as I'm moving it is where you want the cart to be and the yellow bar right there is where it currently is. So let's tell it to go down to the diamond layer and start mining. But before that, let's talk about this little inventory spot right here. This is the bridge storage, and it'll build bridges in front of it if it encounters a pit. So uh, you can load this up with either stone, wooden planks, stone bricks, or bricks. And uh, it'll build bridges out of this material before laying down the rail cart in front of it. So if it encounters a big chasm, it's not going to have a problem. So let's give it some fuel and see what it does. I'm telling it to mine at Y level 17. So it's going to start digging down a little bit and make its way down to Y level 17. And all the stuff it collects is going to go into its inventory line here. Pretty cool. And it'll continue laying down the tracks in front of it from its rail slot because it has a builder component to it. I'll come back in a minute once we've gotten deep enough. Now while this cart is going ahead and digging along here, um, you can see that it's also collecting some coal and storing it in its fuel slot. So any coal it runs to, it will use to fuel itself and help it out. Um, but while that's going, I haven't solved the problem of liquid yet. Uh, the liquid solution is simply right over here. A liquid sensor can be built using that simple PCB module again in a diamond. And this liquid sensor can be added to the simple AI miner to give you a simple AI miner with liquid sensor. And what that will do is keep an eye out for lava or water nearby and it won't clear out an area until um, the, uh, if the area has liquid lava or water nearby. And because it's getting awfully dark down there, why don't we get ourselves a light... Uh, torch placer and have that follow my cart down. So let's see what happens if I put the torches and um, tell this guy with fuel in it that he can run off fuel and light. And that thing should go down and just follow my minecart and place torches all along the way. And it won't interfere with the minecart itself, uh, the, the miner that is. It'll just follow behind and make sure to place torches anywhere it can. Okay, I lied. It did get in the way of my miner, but that's okay. 
we'll send the torch cart down after the miner in a bit once the miner has gotten to the level it needs. So right now we're at Y49 and we can see that indication by uh, checking this out. We're still not anywhere near 17. While I'm waiting for that to go ahead and dig, let me show you guys one of the upgrades to the traveling cart. Remember this is the guy that you could travel in. You can craft a control panel here, like so, again using one of those simple PCBs to give you a more advanced cart for moving around. This is called the driving cart. Let's go ahead and place this guy down. Now to use the driving cart, you're going to need some of these rail junctions here. And uh, just place this guy down and get inside. Whoa, what is going on here? All you got to do once you're inside the cart is right click on it and now you've got your fuel level and you have this reset trip button here. I'll get into that in a minute. And uh, you don't have to use any interfaces to move around. So let's check this guy out. I'm going to place the, the coal in there to get it going. And uh, the interface on the left shows me your odometer, how long this thing has traveled in total, your trip, how far it's traveled since you got into the cart, and then uh, some directional indicators, which you control with the W, A, and D keys, um, forward, left, and right, uh, whatever your defaults are for turning uh, your player around and moving them forward. And uh, the bottom right there is your uh, fuel level, how much coal is inside. You can see it used one piece of coal to get the coal level up, and uh, your tank, your uh, fuel tank. Now press the space key to increase your speed, and the speed is indicated by that blue line on the bottom in the middle. And you can hit space again to get faster and faster. And your cart will simply travel along doing its thing. Now if you want to control which way it goes at an intersection, simply hold the forward key to continue going forward at an intersection instead of turning. So hold forward and it'll go forward. Hold right, and it'll go right. Now, if you're manually holding forward and there is no forward direction like I just did, you're going to have a problem. You're going to fall off the track. Hit the W, A, and D key at the same time to get out of your minecart, and either push it back on the track and then get back in. And the fuel level is slowly dipping down. Hit the uh, shift key to decrease your speed and slow down. And uh, that's pretty much it. But it's a lot of fun to get to drive this guy around. And uh, your junctions here, you can control what direction you go in by holding the buttons as shown. Let's turn left. And slow down. And WAD again to get out. Now my minecart here that was mining, my AI miner, ran into a problem. And as you can see, by the interface on the inventory, it's run out of room to dig. And um, what it's going to do once it runs out of room to dig is it's going to stop and make its way back up the inter um, incline that it was digging for itself. So there's no room for inventory. It ran out of space. It ran into iron down there, and there's just no room for iron. So that's a problem. We're going to have to do something about that, I suspect. So let's give this guy a moment, and I'll be right back to show you what we're going to do about it. We're going to place down what's called an advanced detector rail, shown here. And uh, this guy will go ahead and sit next to something called the cargo manager. Now the cargo manager, what I'm going to do is place it right here. Um, just on the ground for a moment next to it, you'll see that there's four sides to this guy with different colors. This is a very advanced and complicated block, but it does a lot of cool stuff. Okay, open up the interface and you can see there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Right now it's in the default mode where all these inventories are shared. So this is a massive amount of inventory that this block holds. It's a big old chest. And uh, the cargo manager, I'll show you the recipe real quick before moving on, is made with some chests and some iron. Okay, now what this guy's settings do is right now it's set up so that anything in the cargo manager will go and emit to any cart that shows up on one of its sides. So you can see we've got the red side here, right there, and that means that anything inside the cargo manager will be dumped into the cart when a cart passes a detector rail on the red side. Okay, and uh, it'll also do the same thing on the yellow side, the blue side, and the green side. But we can change this experience by clicking on the arrow. Now what's going to happen is anything that comes by on the red side, the inventory in the cart will get dumped into the cargo manager. But anything that comes on the green, blue, or yellow side will get emitted from the cargo manager into the cart. Okay. Now we can also change 
how many items move over. Right now it's set to move the maximum number of things over, but we can say move one item, three, eight, 16, 32, or 64 individual items. And we can also move one stack, two stacks, three, five, or max again. So the S at the end is stacks and the I is individual items. Um, we can also click on the um, items here, and this indicates which type of items will be transferred from the cart. For example, in this setting mode, it's going to move items from everywhere in this cart. Well, we don't really want it taking out rails or coal. That would not be cool. So uh, what we're going to have to do is tell it to not do this. This would take items out of the engine. Well, we don't want it taking coal out of the engine, so let's move on. Uh, rail storage. Well, we don't want it taking items out of the rail storage. We want it to keep its rails in there. That would not be cool. Uh, how about this? The storage used by carts with a chest. Yeah, that's what we want to dump out. We want to ex dump out all the storage stuff. Now, we could also have it pull out torches, used only by the torch placer. TNT, used only by the TNT cart. Uh, arrows is used by the turret cart. I'll get to that in a bit. And uh, bridge storage, used by anything that builds bridges, which is this slot right here. And uh, from here, we've got uh, some more other things that I haven't gotten to yet, so I'll cover them in a bit. But uh, basically, we want to tell it to empty out storage from the storage slot. Cool. Now, there's a couple other things we can do. Uh, we can change by clicking on this arrow to have this color do different things. So what we could do is we could say, hey, whenever this cart gets up here, okay, and it approaches on the red side, we're going to empty out its inventory, and we're going to put into it, into the engine slot, any engine type materials that can go in there. So let's get ourselves some more coal, okay? So any uh, fuel source that is available inside this inventory will be placed inside on the red side because clicking on this arrow changes the color that this setting represents. So we're going to put any fuels into the engine from the cargo manager. And another thing we could do is say, oh yeah, let's change up this red side here and we'll say put in any rails as well and that'll refill the rail slot. And the inventory right now is completely um, unified. So it doesn't matter where the rails go. I could put the rails over here as well. Okay. Pretty cool. Now another thing we could do with this guy, there's even more functions. Uh, if you click on the center block here, you can see that it splits up the inventories like so. What this means is that this inventory will be used for this setting, this inventory will be used for this setting, and this inventory will be used for this setting. But if we click on this middle guy again, we can see that now we've got red borders around it. Um, so what this indicates is that this inventory will be used for red, as will this one and this one, and this inventory will be used for green. And uh, if we change the color mode here, you can see this inventory would now be used for yellow. Uh, so that is pretty cool. Awesome. So let's keep it separated, or you know what? Let's keep it all the same. Doesn't matter to me. We're going to go ahead and set up this junction box right here. So again, we're approaching the red side, and because the AI miner reached a spot where it couldn't continue, it came and made its way all the way back up to the top of the track. And if we look at the red side here, you can see that I've now set it up so that any items in the storage will get dumped into this slot, out of the storage slot, into the cargo manager. And uh, same thing here, out of the storage slot into the cargo manager. And then uh, rails will be deposited from the cargo manager into the rail slot. And fuel will be deposited from the cargo manager into the fuel slot. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some rails. Uh, I'm going to need a normal rail and an advanced detector rail right here. And let this guy move forward. Go. All right, he doesn't want to move. So let's put some fuel in him and uh, get him going again. There we go. So I'm just going to open up the interface and it'll move forward. And note that what it's doing now is it's depositing all its items into the cargo loader. See that? And it's also dumping the contents of the rails and the coal after the cargo loader is done. So it's transferring out all the items it collected and then it should start pulling in coal and rails. And then it's going to move along its merry way and go back to mining. So what this guy's going to do now is go ahead and just continue mining along way down inside this cave. And this is the simple AI miner, by the way. Remember? Simple AI miner? There's a more complicated cart coming up.
so he's gonna go back to mining. And again, when his inventory is full, he'll zip back up now, hit that cargo guy, dump out all its contents, and go back to mining. Once it hits level 17, it's gonna stop going down and just continue forward. While we're waiting for that AI miner to dig, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the cleaning cart. Simply a storage cart with engine plus cleaning gadget shown here. This guy will pick up items on the ground nearby when it rolls over. So let's go ahead and drop a bunch of items over here on the ground. Make a big old mess. And as the cleaning cart moves past, it's going to go ahead and pick all that up. Simply place some coal in the engine here and it's going to scoop all those items up from a decent distance, about one block away. It won't pick up the stuff further than one block, but it will suck it all up and store it in its inventory. Pretty cool. And look at this, I'm hanging out down here at Y level 18, and it looks like my cart has done exactly what I told it to once it got down to the Y level that I suggested, 17. Now remember my character's head is at 17, so the cart is at, or my character's head is at 18, the cart is at 17. Okay, and it's just moving along forward now, straight through, and collecting all the resources it gets. And because it's giving us a nice indication that this is a nice spot to find diamonds. Um, now this is information here is just based off the Minecraft wiki. It tells you where a good level to find diamonds is. 17 will work. Let's have it go just a little bit lower. Let's have it mine around 13. I think that sounds good, don't you? Oh, now it's going to start digging down again. Sweet. We'll let this guy dig for a little bit longer. Next up, we've got the turret cart. A cleaning cart plus a shooting station, crafted like so. Now a turret cart can fire arrows at enemies. Check this out. Open up the interface here and you can see that there's a fuel level to keep it moving. And there's an interface here I'll get to in a moment. And a um, shooting level here. I'll get to that again in just a moment. And uh, we just need to fill this guy up with arrows. So let's get a few. And they go into these arrow slots right up here. This is your uh, inventory for storing your ammunition. Cool. Now the interface here isn't too terribly complex. Uh, this is the direction that the minecart is facing, the arrow right up here. So this is the front of the minecart. And if you want it to be able to shoot arrows out the front, just click up here. That will shoot three arrows out the front, where this will only shoot one or two or three, something like that. If you want it to shoot out the left sides, or all sides, you can simply do that. This here is the frequency of shots. Uh, basically, the lower the number down, or the lower the slider, the slower it'll shoot. Um, the borders and the um, numbers inside the borders are more about uh, the frequency than anything else. Um, it's a complicated math system that I didn't really understand in the instructions. It's like this whole weird calculation about how many shots per tick it's going to do. So I'm just going to leave it at this high number because that looks good to me. I don't know. Um, and then put the coal in there to get it to start moving around. Ha! Look at that. Sweet. Let's lower that interface a little bit because that seems to be a little bit high. There we go. That looks like a little bit more realistic number. So you can see, every time the thing makes a path around here, it's going to go ahead and shoot, like that. The higher the number, the faster it's going to zip around and shoot. And the top number here is the fastest, like I had it pretty high. So let's go with that. That looks cool. Yeah, that looks like a much better number to go with. And yeah, it's shooting me too, so you want to be a little bit careful. It's not an intelligent cart, it's just going to shoot stuff out every now and then. And uh, the inventory slot that you guys saw inside here is for collecting items because it's a cleaner cart, remember, so it can collect items off the ground. So if you had some enemies nearby, for example, some zombies, um, it should kill them and then collect their drops. Sweet. And look, it picked up the um, zombie rotten flesh. Awesome. So yeah, be careful with that one. It's a little dangerous, but a lot of fun. And guys, I'm not done with Steve's carts yet, but I've reached pretty much the end of this episode. So uh, I'm going to come back in a little bit with episode two of Steve's carts mod spotlight. There's a lot more to cover. Um, the farming cart is coming up next. Uh, there's a couple other ones, such as the assembly cart, the track placer and remover. Um, there's pretty much a couple cool things that you have uh, not yet seen. And a majority of the next episode will be the assembly cart, which... Uh, 
It doesn't assemble things, I'll tell you that much. It's a pretty complex cart, and it'll probably take me most of the episode to explain. So this is the end of part one of Steve's Cart's Mod Spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. Come right back for part two, and you'll see uh, the rest of the carts available in Steve's Cart's.